Good morning, Hope Church and Hope at Home. We are so excited to have you with us today. Please stand and join us for worship.
welcome to Hope Church. Uh, if we get all the kids, we'd love to invite the children up front to join us for our next song. So our next song is titled Praise. And you know, on Resurrection Sunday, I don't think there is a better song for us to sing because he is risen. Yes! All right, yes, I love the excitement. He is risen. We are super excited. Come on up, guys. All right. Okay.
All righty. Kiddos, you're going to stay in here. For everyone, if you guys don't mind, just take a seat real quick. we got to clear the stage for a few things. I'm going to move this. Hey, will you have, did you find it? Is this yours? Yeah, that one's mine. Which one am I on? There. They're right there? Red one? Okay. Okay. Hey, welcome. Glad you guys are here. I know, um, I know the room is full. I know the room is full. Kids, you're going to get dismissed in about five minutes. We have something really special for you that I wanted the kids to be able to see and be a part of. Um, we have five teenagers from our church that all uh, dance at a studio here in town. And so they're doing a hymn from 1707. Who was alive in 17? Anybody? Say, okay, nobody. Okay. 1707. Um, and it is, a, it is a beautiful song just about the name of Jesus and him being glorious. So I'm going to hand it over. Where's Alec? Oh, you're good. Come on. We had to clear the stage. There's a lot for them to clear. Uh, but man, I, I'm excited for this group and for these guys serving. Ready to go? All right. Jesus, my great high priest, offer his blood and died. My guilty conscience seeks no sacrifice beside his powerful blood. Did once atone and now it pleads before the Great job, guys. Hey, I want to invite the band back up. Band, you guys can come back up. we got a few more songs. Thank you, guys. I want to just mention Kendra right here. She's running back to her seat. She choreographed the whole thing. They've been practicing for months, it seems like. So give it up for them one more time. Awesome. There you go. 
All right, kiddos, up through sixth grade, up through sixth grade, you guys are going to be dismissed back to your classrooms. Everyone else, you can go ahead and stand. We got two more songs.
cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet. His body bowed and drenched in tears. They laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone. Messiah still and all alone.
are so thankful and grateful that you made a path for us. We celebrate that today. You made a path through your son for us to come to you through the blood of Jesus. We are redeemed. You loved us so much that you sent him and he has washed away our sins. He faced death and he beat it. He has risen. Oh, we celebrate that today and let us remember that every day. The living hope of Jesus Christ because it's not just our hope today. It's our hope today and tomorrow and forever. You have given us the path for eternity with you. What a beautiful gift. What a beautiful mercy that we have. Oh, your grace is amazing. Thank you, Lord. We ask for your blessing on the rest of our service and may it bring you honor and glory. In your precious name, Well, welcome everyone. Welcome here at Hope Church and welcome Hope at Home. We are so glad you're with us today and you've decided to celebrate Easter with us. Come on, he is risen. Come on. Yeah. What a fantastic uh, time of the year uh, just to come together as the body of Christ to give praise to our risen Savior. Amen to that. Amen to that. Real quick, I just want you to know that next week uh, we start our purpose classes, which we've said a few times. But if you're new with us and you would love to find out more about Hope Church, I would love to meet with you starting next week uh, at 9 o'clock right here in the foyer. We're going to meet in the classroom over there. You are invited, okay? You are invited to come. You can sign up for that if you'd like on the app, okay? So let's do that and get to know more about Hope Church. If you've missed the last couple weeks, or if you've been with us, uh, just by way of recap, we've, we've been in a series on Passion Week. And we said that the Gospels consist of 29 chapters, okay, 29 chapters of the 89 that there are, and that are devoted to one week. That's one third of the Gospels devoted to one week. Week. All of those chapters focused on the final week of Jesus' life on earth. Is that pretty incredible? I mean, that makes this really important. This is really important as we focus our attention on Jesus and what he did during his last, last week. We talked. Uh, last week about how the religious leaders and the authorities were, they, they had one goal, and that goal was to get rid of Jesus. And they tried everything they could try to catch him in his words, to warrant an arrest, to turn him in, right? So we, we left off with Jesus and his disciples taking communion together. And Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. Judas, the betrayer, has, has left the group to turn Jesus into the authorities. And for the remainder of that night, Jesus and his disciples head out to a place very familiar to them. It was to a grove of olive trees called Gethsemane. So I want to pick it up right there in Matthew chapter 26, starting in verse 26. Here we go. It says, Then Jesus 
went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there. And he took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. And then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here. Keep watch with me. And going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and he prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Clearly, something has changed in Jesus as he begins to feel the weight of this night pressing down on him. In Luke's gospel, he tells us that at this point, Jesus, he began sweating heavily to the point where where his sweat was like drops of blood. All right, that doesn't sound like my typical prayers around the dinner table at home, okay? That sounds deeper. That sounds like a battle. In fact, it is. It is a battle. Because it was here in Gethsemane that a spiritual battle began. Not not the battle to endure the physical pain of the cross or the abusive mockery of men, although Jesus would have to endure those things, but a battle to do the will of God. Do you ever feel the weight of the will of God in your life? The weight of of needing to do the right thing, but not wanting to or maybe resisting what you know you need to do? Have you ever felt that pressure build up? I bet you are familiar with pressure like that. I bet you are familiar with that battle. It's the battle of saying, my will be done or your will be done. That's a tough fight, isn't it? It produces pressure in you. And I'm sure this is a battle we are all in. But I'm here to tell you this morning that Jesus fought that battle for you, and he was victorious. Amen? Here, the battle involved a cup. What did Jesus mean by the cup? Cups are actually referred to many times throughout God's word. Here's an example from Isaiah chapter 51, verse 17. Isaiah says, he says, Awake, awake, rise up, Jerusalem, you who have drunk from the hand of the Lord the cup of his wrath. You who have drained to its dregs the goblet that makes people stagger. The cup. What is the cup? The cup is the cup of God's wrath on mankind. And in the Old Testament, Israel sometimes had to drink from that cup for their disobedience, which was no small thing but major rebellion against God. So bad sometimes that Israel did worse things than the pagan nations around them. And so there has always been a cup to drink for those kinds of actions taken against 
God. And so as Jesus is praying and the sweat is coming down his face like drops of blood, this is the image in his mind when he says those words. This cup did not represent death. This cup represented God's full judgment. And when Isaiah says that the cup has been drained down to the dregs, he means this cup was meant to be drunk down to the very bottom. That's where the dregs are, which is the leftovers, the particles and skins and seeds of the wine grapes that would have been at the very bottom of the barrel, the worst of it. And so in the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus is wrestling with the reality of what salvation actually requires. That in order to follow the will of God and to say yes to the will of God, the only, the only way to make things right again between man and God is to go to the bottom of the barrel for all mankind. And this, this question, is this possible? That might be a question you have in your mind. Is it possible to satisfy the wrath of God? Is it possible to be completely forgiven? This question is for our benefit. Will Jesus have to drink the full cup? Not part of the cup, not some of the cup, but all of the cup. For all of God's wrath on all of mankind, the punishment for everything that has been done in opposition to God's will in this one cup. Now that is some pressure, isn't it? Maybe you can start to get a sense of how Jesus felt in this garden. And here we, we see just a little bit of it, that, that he was laid out on the ground he, he laid down on his face before God and he prays and he asks, is it possible to take the cup away? If that were possible, God, then, then let's find a better way. Let's find a, a different way. Let's not do this. But what does Jesus say? Whatever the answer, he says, not as I will, but as you will. And that right there, that is probably the most profound thing that you could ever say to God in the midst of the pressure that you feel in your life right now. Whatever you're going through, to be on your face before God and to say whatever it takes, not my will, your will. That is the battle in all of us every day. Well, just to be sure, Jesus prays again. <clears throat> so let's double check. Let's make sure. Matthew 26, 42, he went away a second time and he prayed and he said, my father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away, unless I drink it, may your will be done. What's he saying here? He's saying, okay then, if the only possibility is for me to drink this cup down to the bottom. May your will be done. 
That's an amazing statement. You know what happens. Jesus is arrested. Jesus is denied. Jesus is tried. He is beaten. He is crucified. It was even beyond recognition. And he was buried in a tomb at the hand of men, but by the will of God. It's hard to accept that sometimes. Why was it this way? Well, Gethsemane has a lot to reveal to us. The name Gethsemane, where Jesus was, his final night before his arrest, the name itself means oil press. Because that is where they press the olives to get out the precious oil that was so beneficial for the life of the community. And the olives were crushed in this huge, heavy stone press. And I want you to watch this video with that in mind, okay? pretty powerful image, isn't it? The prophet Isaiah said, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. And the punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Jesus offered himself here in the Garden of Gethsemane to be crushed like an olive. Why? Why did he do that? He did it so we could have what the olive produces. The oil, the all-important oil. Olive oil was used in the offering of sacrifices at the temple. It was also used to make anointing oil. And it was used to keep lamps burning, especially this one lampstand in particular, that was in the temple of God. It was, it was meant to continually burn all of the time. In Leviticus, we see 
in chapter 24, the Lord says to Moses, command the Israelites to bring you clear oil of pressed olives for the light so that the lamps may be kept burning continually. The purpose of that oil was to consecrate whatever it touched. And what that meant was that whatever it touched became pure and holy and able to be in the presence of God. And we see here that the will of God was that Jesus would be crushed like those olives in the oil press. And that through the heavy judgment that was laid upon him alone, you would receive a great reward. He would be offered as a sacrifice for our sins. And that by the precious oil, the blood of Jesus, we would be made pure and holy. Isn't that incredible? What he did, what he does that began in the Garden of Gethsemane was the hard-pressed work of salvation in your life. That Jesus was so willingly offering for the world. If we were to scroll forward in the story and, and Jesus has been crucified and now he's on the cross, his final words were what? Do you remember? It is finished. It is finished. What, is, what does this mean? It means exactly what he meant in Gethsemane, that the full wrath of God had been poured out and satisfied so that we could be forgiven. And not only that, but that our lamps will continually burn, meaning our lives. Jesus always had an eternal flame in mind for our lives, for us to live forever with him. And he made a way through being crushed for our sins. And he proved to us that there is an eternal destiny for all of us when he rose from the dead. Amen? He was buried in a tomb. And three days later, he rose again. Let's just read a clip from Luke's gospel. Luke 24, it says, on the, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices that had they had prepared and went to the tomb. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why? Do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Amen. I want you to know this morning that he was crushed for you. Because he was so overwhelmed with the thought of you not having eternal salvation. He wanted that for your life. Salvation has come to us at a huge price. And Jesus provided us this precious oil to keep our lamps burning. And we know from God's word that the real temple is not brick and stone. The real temple is you. It's your heart. And that is the lamp he wants to keep burning. We need his oil in our lives. 
he went to the bottom of the cup, drank down the full judgment that was supposed to be on us so that we could be made righteous. That is the gospel that we have received. Let me finish this morning by reading another verse from Isaiah. When Isaiah prophesied in the Old Testament the coming Savior, he gave this proclamation, Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. Here's what it says. It says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and to release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes and the oil of joy instead of mourning. The oil of joy he came to give us. This morning you might be feeling the pressing weight of sin in your life the things that you've done, the things that you haven't given over to the Lord. And I want to encourage you to give your life to Jesus this morning. He can drink the cup that you can't. We find in the Bible that no one was ever able to force Jesus into this decision. Nobody could do it. They couldn't catch him in a lie. They couldn't catch him in anything that would make him an enemy to the government. They couldn't catch him in his taxes like we talked about last week. He did it himself. And here he is in the garden. You know, he could have met somewhere else. He didn't have to meet in the garden of Gethsemane. Judas clearly knew where to find Jesus. Right? Jesus basically dropped a pin for him. Here I am. Right here in the garden. You know where I am. Come and find me. But John, John tells us, for this reason the Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. Amen? He laid down in the oil press for your soul. I want to invite uh, those who are going to lead us in our final song to come on up and get ready. I appreciate you guys. I just want to ask you a question as they're getting ready. Isn't it time to climb out of the bottom of the barrel? Out of the despair, out of the brokenness, out of whatever has taken you captive in your life? And isn't it time to accept in its place the oil of joy? that was pressed out for your life. Let God's will be done 
in you today. And accept him. Accept the oil that he offered for you. And if anybody wants to do that today, I would be honored to meet with you after we worship, okay? Amen. All right, guys.
We thank you for the story that you've laid out in your word that, can, that we can see why the blood of Jesus is necessary, that you came down to redeem and restore communion with your people. You sacrificed so greatly so that we can live in communion, in step with you, Lord Jesus. I thank you so much for that sacrifice, God. I thank you so much for the blood applied on our behalf. Father God, you are good. And what makes your sacrifice so great and so different is that you rose three days later. And thank you, Jesus, for raising from that grave. Thank you, Jesus, for raising from that grave so that we can have life. That we don't have to be in the grave. That we, we will live. We will live in communion with you. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, for raising from the dead. Lord, we love you. We thank you for this Easter time. I pray a blessing over this congregation, Lord. It's in your son's precious and holy name that I pray. Amen. Oh, you all are dismissed. Happy Easter. <laughs>